In this video, I will show you how to solve a system of conic sections. And uh, in this case, we have a circle and an ellipse. So the idea is uh, we have a circle and an ellipse. I don't know exactly how it's going to look compared to the circle, but maybe, for example, it would be like this. So we could have up to four intersection points between the circle and the ellipse, and we are looking for those intersection points. This kind of looks like a bootleg Saturn. I'm such an artist. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, we could use substitution or elimination. I'm going to try elimination on this problem because it looks very doable. Elimination is a method where you want opposites to cancel each other out. So see how I have y squared and y squared? All I would need to do is multiply this equation by negative 1. And that would create opposites that will cancel. So if I multiply this equation by negative 1, I'm going to get negative x squared minus y squared is equal to negative 1. Now the bottom equation, I am leaving the same. So I haven't changed anything. So this is still 4x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. But now you see I have opposites that will cancel. So if I combine these, I'm going to get 3x squared. These are going to cancel out. And that's, it's funny because these actually cancel out as well. So um, this is easily solved because I will just divide both sides by 3. And so that's going to give me x squared is equal to 0. If I take the square root of both sides, I get x is equal to 0. So understand that what I have right now, as I begin to build my solution set, I have an x value, 0, comma what? Alright, I still need the y value that's going to go with this. So where am I going to get the y value? Well, I'm going to take the x value that I have and plug it into one of the original equations. Um, the top equation looks the simplest, so we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. If x is equal to 0, alright, if I take this and I plug it in right there, then that's going to give me 0 squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Um, 0 squared is nothing, so I'm just going to have y squared is equal to 1. If I take the square root of both sides, then I'm going to have y is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay, I took the square root, and then that's plus or minus. Square root of 1 is 1. So that's interesting. I have uh, one x value, but then I have two y values. How am I going to deal with that? Well, I will write the one x value that I have twice so that I can put down my, uh, my two y values. So I have 0, comma, 1, and I have 0, comma, negative 1. So these are my two solutions to this system. Now, um, let's take a peek at Am not Amazon.com, uh, Desmos.com, and see the circle and the ellipse and how they meet at two points. All right, this is always my favorite part of the problem. All right, take a look at this. Um, the purple one is my circle. The red function is the ellipse, and as it turned out, the intersection points are 0, comma, negative 1 and 0, comma, positive 1, just like this. Isn't that neat? Take a look at problem number 4. Let's try solving this um, by elimination method again. So, um, first of all, you need the like terms to be lined up. So, uh, the top equation I have x squared and then y squared. But then in the bottom equation, I have y squared and then x squared. So I'm going to switch this around. So uh, just recopying the top equation, I've got x squared minus y squared is equal to 36. 
and then uh, putting the negative 9x squared first and then plus 4y squared is equal to 36. Now the like terms are all lined up. By the way, these are both hyperbolas. I can tell because I have a positive and a negative x squared and y squared terms in both cases. One's positive and one's negative. That makes it a hyperbola. Um, anyways, if we're going to do the elimination method, we need opposites that will cancel. So I'm going to target these y's. Um, imagine that I were to multiply this by 4. Watch how this turns into a negative 4 and I want that because it will cancel out the positive 4. So I'm going to have 4x squared minus 4y squared is equal to, uh, let's see, what is 4 times 36? 144. I did not change the bottom equation so I'm just going to bring this over the way it is. Okay, so now I'm going to combine these equations into a new equation, but these are going to cancel each other out. And here I will have negative 5x squared equals. All right, um, equals 180. I see a problem that's about to happen because, of course, the next thing I'm going to do is divide uh, both sides by negative 5. But then look what happens. I get um, x squared is equal to negative 36. This can't happen. You can't have something squared and getting a negative number. Or thinking of it another way, if I were to take the square root of both sides right now, um, you can't take the square root of a negative number. That's going to be imaginary. So we're not going to get any solutions from this. Okay, um, and this was all we had. All right, we don't have any other uh, options. So um, we're just going to write none. Okay, none meaning um, that's how many solutions there are. So this must be a case where these two hyperbolas don't touch. There must be no intersection points at all. So it'll be really fun to take a look at Desmos, and I'm betting that it's going to be, uh, so these are both hyperbolas, so I bet it's going to be this type of thing where we have like a hyperbola, and then, well, I don't know, like maybe the other one will be like this, all right, or maybe, maybe it's one of them up and one of them down, yeah, maybe it'll be like this. Okay, maybe because uh, we'll have a sideways hyperbola and then we'll have a vertical hyperbola, but they never touch. That's my bet. Let's take a look. So take a look at this, guys. Um, the purple one is the hyperbola here, and the red one is the vertical hyperbola. And just like we thought, they simply don't touch. So that's why there was no solution, and that's a pretty cool picture. All right, take a look at number five. Let's try solving this one by substitution. So I'm going to write these side by side, um, which is something I like to do for organizational purposes whenever I do a substitution problem. So I have um, this equation, and then I have this equation. All right, so what I can do is, um, since y squared equals 3x minus 1, I can take this 3x minus 1 and substitute it for y squared in the other equation. So this will become x squared plus 3x minus 1 squared is equal to 9. All right, I made that substitution. Uh, wait, I messed that up. I messed that up. y squared equals 3x minus 1. It's not y it's not y that equals 3x minus 1 so this should not still be squared alright I'm replacing the y squared with this so the entire y squared is gone and in its place I have 3x minus 1 okay so I really don't even need the parentheses um, so what I'm gonna do next is subtract 9 from both sides 
So that's going to give me x squared plus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. Now this looks like it's probably going to be factorable. So x squared is x times x. Um, 10, I'm thinking 2 times 5. Inner, I have 2x. Outer, I have 5x. I'm trying to get 3x. So if I have a minus 2x and a positive 5x, so let's go minus 2 and positive 5. All right, to make negative 10, so everything's looking good. Now to solve this, I'm going to set each of these equal to 0. So this is uh, adding 2 to both sides, I have x equals 2. Subtracting 5 from both sides, I have x is equal to negative 5. OK, so I have these uh, two possible solutions so far. But understand this, my friends. OK, as I set up for my solutions over here, um, I've got these two x values. So I have 2 comma something. And I have negative 5 comma something. I don't have the y values yet. I still need to find those. So I'm going to substitute these x values in one at a time. And I'm going to see what I get for the y values. So let's start by letting x equal 2. So let x equal 2. And let's see what happens. So um, this would become y squared is equal to 3 times 2 minus 1. So y squared will equal 6 minus 1. So y squared will equal 5. So that means y is going to equal plus or minus the square root of 5. All right, well, that gives me two different y values for this one x value. So how do I write this down? Um, well, since I have two different y values, I'm going to have to write the first x value twice. OK, so I've got uh, radical 5 and negative radical 5. So I have two solutions so far from the same x value. Now, let's see what happens if we let x equal uh, negative 5 now. All right, so now let x equal negative 5. And let's see what happens. All right, do I have space down here? I think I do. So um, y squared, I'm still looking at the same equation right here. So y squared is equal to 3 times negative 5 minus 1. So y squared is equal to negative 15 minus 1. So y squared is equal to negative 16. Huh, that's not possible. You can't square something and get a negative number. Uh, or looking at it another way, if I were to go forward and take the square root, that's imaginary. You can't take the square root of a negative number. Um, so we're not going to get any solutions from here. OK. Um, the answer is not no solution, because we already have a solution from the other x value. Okay, But this negative 5 business, that didn't work out. So these are my two solutions, my only two solutions. All right, so let's look at what we had. This first equation was a parabola. You can tell, by the way, only one variable is squared. So that's a parabola. Uh, I should have written it as a sideways parabola. You can tell because the, when the y is squared, that's a sideways parabola. OK, so we have a sideways parabola and a circle with radius 3. OK, and we have two solutions. So um, put these two together, and I'm betting we're dealing with this type of a situation. OK, and I bet we just found these two solutions right here. So having made our guess, let's check Desmos and see how we did. So take a look. Um, the 
purple one is our sideways parabola, just like we expected. The red one is the circle. And here we have our two intersection points, um, 2 comma 2.2 and 2 comma negative 2.2. And this is the value of square, square root of 5, and this is negative radical 5. All right, that is pretty neat. All right, let's just throw a real world problem into this video as a bonus. A semi-elliptical arch over a tunnel for a road through a mountain has a major axis of 100 feet and a height at the center of 40 feet. Sketch a graph of the arch with the center of the ellipse at the origin. Identify the coordinates of the known points. Let's just go ahead and do that right now. So they said the arch was semi-elliptical, meaning it's half of an ellipse. They said that the major axis was 100. So that means 50 in each direction from the center, which of course is 0, 0. They said the height of the arch at the center um, is 40. So we have these three points labeled. Now we need to find an equation of this ellipse. OK. so. The way that you have the equation of an ellipse at the center is just going to be x squared uh, over a squared plus y squared over b squared, and that will equal 1. All right, the center is 0, comma 0, so I'm just going to have x squared and y squared. So I just need to know what's a squared and b squared. Well, a is just the distance from the center to a vertex. So A is 50. So that means this is going to be, um, maybe I'll just write this down. So A is 50. Um, and B is 40. Since B is the distance from the center um, to a covertex, which is what the uh, the top of the arch is a covertex. So I'm just going to square these. So I'm going to have um, x squared over um, 2,500 plus y squared over 1,600 is equal to 1. Now for part C, we're supposed to determine the height of the arch five feet from the edge of the tunnel. Okay, so keep in mind that the height is a y value. So we're looking for a y value. So the question is, what is the x value five feet from the edge of the tunnel? Well, the edge of the tunnel is at 50. So five feet away from that edge is going to be 45. So five feet from the edge of a tunnel, okay, we are talking about an x value of 45. So this question boils down to, given that the x value is 45, what is the y value going to be? So I think I'll change colors. So let's use the equation that we just found. And uh, we're going to plug in uh, x equals 45, and we're going to solve for y. So this would become 45 squared over 2,500 plus y squared over 1,600 is equal to 1. And we need to solve this for y. So that gives me 2,025 over 2,500, which reduces to 81 over 100. So I'm still trying to get um, y squared by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 81 hundredths from both sides. OK, so now I have y squared over 1,600 is equal to, and I need to do 1 minus 81 one hundredths. 
Well, 1 is an easy number to deal with when I'm adding and subtracting fractions because I can make this into anything I want. 2 over 2, 3 over 3, 4 over 4, or 100 over 100. All right, obviously I'm picking 100 over 100 so that I will immediately have like denominators. Okay, so now I have y squared over 1,600 is equal to, um, what is this, 19? But then I need to multiply both sides by 1,600. Okay, so that's going to cancel these out. So now I'm going to have y squared equals. Um, now 100 is going to divide evenly into 1,600 and basically um, I know that's just going to be 16. When you divide by 100 you're, you're going to lose those zeros on the end. So it's just going to be whatever 19 times 16 is. On second thought, instead of actually multiplying 19 times 16, I'm gonna leave it like this because my next move is to take the square root of both sides, and that's gonna give me four radical 19, which is easier to see in this form. So this is the y value right here. I didn't do plus or minus because you can't have a negative height. Um, so, it seems like for a real world problem like this, uh, a decimal approximation would be more appropriate. So uh, I'm gonna go back and, and take the square root. So four radical 19 is approximately 17.4 feet. Okay, so that is the height of the uh, arch five feet from the edge. Okay, so uh, what was that? So I'm just gonna write four radical 19 or, oh, that's a horrible R, or 17.4 um, feet. Okay. And uh, one more little question here. Determine the height of the arch five feet from the center. Well, the center is at zero comma zero. So five feet from the center, we're just, we're simply talking about an X value of five. So again, all right, I'm gonna change colors. So again, we're being asked to find the height. Okay, so we're being asked to find a Y value and uh, five feet from the center, okay, they're giving us that the x value is five. So really we're just gonna do, do that exact same process that we did a moment ago again. Okay, so um, using our equation of the circle, substituting um, five in for x, I'm gonna have five squared over 2,500 plus y squared over 1,600 is equal to one. So 25 over 2,500 okay so this is going to be one one hundredth All right, so again, I need to uh, move closer to having y squared by itself. So I'm gonna subtract one one hundredth from both sides. So now I've got y squared over 1,600 is equal to, so I've got one minus one over 100. And again, I'm going to write one as 100 over 100 so that I will have like denominators right now. Okay, so now I've got y squared over 1,600 is equal to, all right, obviously 100 minus one is 99. 
Okay, and it is once again time to multiply both sides by 1,600. All right, that way these will cancel out. So now I have y squared equals 100 goes into 1,600 16 times. Okay, um, so 99. There are more perfect squares here. So, um, so I've got y squared equals 16 times 99. But 99 is 9 times 11. So it's really like we have y squared is equal to 16 times 9 times 11. So if I take the square root of both sides, uh, I'm going to get y equals, and this is going to be 4 times 3 times radical 11, right? Square root of 16, square root of 9. So this is really going to be 12 radical 11. Okay, so let me go ahead and write that down. So we're going to have 12 radical 11, and let's see what that is as a decimal. 12 times the square root of 11 is approximately 39.8 feet. All right, so that's it. Um, that is the height of the tunnel, five feet away from the center. Uh, and it makes sense that it's, uh, it's getting pretty close to 40, which is the maximum height it's only five feet away it's only just a little bit to the right um, of the center so it should be pretty close to 40 um, but a little bit less so this makes a lot of sense all right guys that's going to do it for this video go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist